Hi everyone, welcome to my first process stroke tutorial video. Not really too sure what you want to call it. Um, we are completely winging this. So, other than the fact that I have this huge letter K here, and the fact that I have the Kaiser Craft 75 cents paper line, um, I know that we are going to turn this letter into an altered configuration stroke printer's tray letter. But other than that, no clue what we're doing. So we're going to make it up as we go along, which is what I usually do. So this massive letter here is nearly 12 inches long, just over 11 and a half. Uh, this is huge. And I saw uh, Jane using one of these, and I thought it would be a really, really good size to turn into my sort of printer's tray configuration type letter that I did before. If you check a few videos back, you'll see that, and you'll see what we're going to do. So let's make a start and the first thing we need to do is remove the front now I can't remember whether I went with my knife or my scissors last time so let's um, try it and find out so what we need to do is cut a hole in the front so that we can get the scissors in there and cut around it basically this isn't very neat or well you want to be careful not to cut your fingers off right okay so the one that I had before that I did, which was a lot smaller, sort of had um, a lift, just a little bit of this same sort of paper mache stuff on the inside so that it would keep its shape, but I haven't cut one of these big ones open yet, so I have no idea what's going to be inside this one. This is one of those uh, don't try at home kids type things. <laughs> this is actually really, really thick. Okay, let's see if we can get the scissors in there now. Oh, by the way, if you don't know, I film, um, if you haven't watched some of my old videos, I actually film on a standard camera. It's not even a video camera. So I have no idea what you can see. So if I'm off frame at any point, I do apologise, but I don't know what you can and what you can't see. Okay, we're getting into this. Right, okay, so this has the same in as the last one that I did. So if you can see this bit of board here, the last one that I cut open, it just zigzagged right the way along. So what we need to do now is trim this to try and get this quite neat and because this thing is huge I don't know how well this is going to work but we will go around and sand down the edges afterwards this is actually really thick this um, paper mache board as well a lot thicker than the one that I did before pull that off again to the side but like I said we're going to go around and sand it afterwards anyway so it's not too much of a big deal if it's not too perfect right now and then yeah once you've got a hole what you can then do is rip it because it will rip quite straight I don't know if you can how well you can see that that there has just ripped in a straight line right the way down to the bottom so the really difficult bit like I say at first is getting the getting the straight line uh, sorry getting into it to start with but then once you're in then you've got that rip right the way down. So what I'm going to do now is try and cut this bit along the bottom. There we go. And then that's just lifted up. That is fabulous. Check that out. And then what's going on here? Right. Let's try. Oh. Sorry if you can see my my top of my head and the fact that my hair's a big fat mess. <coughs> Okay, it's coming along quite well. Let's cut that along there. I can see the other side. Oh dear, I can see the other side of the uh, of the bend, so I can kind of lift it up to see whereabouts I want to cut. And there we go. One piece of board saved for later. Throw that over there. That's fab. And then we can just take this inside bit out. And this um, was what I used for the shelves inside last time. But you can also use, I've got some corrugated card and I've got some actually really thick, really thick chipboard which might actually be a better thing to make the shelves with. So that's that bit there. I'm going to trim this side up. Get this top side off. Try and rip that out. Oh, that, there we go. That was easier than I expected. Cut that off across the top. Fabulous. That bit didn't cut so well. Okay, run this 
scissors. Sorry if you can't see that. Just run the scissors along that bit to cut it. Really. Right, brilliant. Now to get in here, this is an awkward shaped letter, I might have to do the same as I did before and cut that bit. And if we start cutting that bit, and then let's try lifting it again. Ah, oh, there we go. Fabulous. So these things happen to be made in such a way that you can actually quite easily take them apart. Look, there's even some staples there. Right, there we go. Another bit out. And then cut down this edge. So do I. This is what I do when I create, by the way, guys. I have, I generally have no type of plan or idea where I'm going. Or I have like a very rough idea of what I want to do, like the fact that I know I want to make this into a printer's tray stroke configuration type box, but other than that, no clue. So I'm assuming it's because this is quite big, but this is actually set up slightly differently to the one I used before. This appears to have separate sort of panels on the inside, and there's some staples in there. So we're obviously going to need to cover them up at some point. Let's get this last bit off get the scissors in one side and then hopefully it can just tear across the other. Yeah, fabulous. Tearing right the way down. Brilliant. And that bit out. Get my scissors across. Another bit off. Brilliant. That went quite well then move all these little bits out of the way. So I think what I'm going to do now is, because this isn't very neat, the same as I did last time, I'm going to run over that with some um, sandpaper. And then look, I'm going to take this off the back and we'll go over that with sandpaper as well. And oh look, there's a price label down here. We probably want to take that off. For anyone that wants to know, that was $4.99. And let's get this one off as well. Right, so I use quite a thin... Um, a thin sandpaper. Mine is it's called P one eighty. Two five five P. Anyone knows what that means? They're a better person than I am or having a clue. So let's sand over the rough edges and try and make it a bit little bit neater. We are also going to paint these edges, so it doesn't necessarily matter a huge amount. But we just want them to look a bit, a little bit neater than they currently do. It's a bit big, actually. This is just um, standard sandpaper that you can buy from any hardware store. I don't buy any sort of special sandpaper for this. I just buy normal sandpaper and then make it work for me. Cutting that bit off because it's a bit. I'm going to try and work out um, with my camera software, well, computer software, if I can uh, work out how to time lapse some of this video and do a voiceover. So if you're hearing me talking now, then obviously I couldn't work out how to do that. And if you're not hearing me talking now, then it means I could work out how to do that. And hopefully it will be a bit more of an interesting video than me feeling like I'm sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> so there we go, that's better. Tap that out. So that will be facing me like that, and that's fabulous because that stands up by itself actually. I'm it up and it looks a bit of a mess. Right. Shaky, shaky. I'm going to wipe all this onto the table for now. And then clear it up afterwards. Right, let me just check that you can still see that where I've put it back down. Yes, you can still see me. Right, fab. Okay, so.
the paper I have. I haven't even looked at it yet, actually. I haven't even taken it out of the packet. So. And I need to decide what paper I want to use so that I can decide what colour to paint around the edges of that. I've never used the Kaiser Craft paper before, so I'm not entirely sure what to expect, if I'm honest. That one looks quite good for fluffy cutting. There's a lot of things to cut there. It appears I have two of each, so I like the back of that as well, actually. A bit of a mark on that one. Okay. That's quite nice. I don't know if you've seen this before or not. That's got like a script kind of running through the background of the flowers. Oh, but me love this one. Love, love, I love. See, I might have to save one of those for another purpose. I love that. So that's the back of that sheet. Ooh, that's nice. I'm not so keen on the back of that one. That's pretty. I really like the um, the colouring of this paper, which is why I bought it. Now, the thing is, inside the boxes, I don't know once I've embellished it quite how much paper you're actually going to see. So, that's nice. I like the chevron. It's pretty cool. Oh, and then I've got, because I bought a pack, I've got a sticker sheet as well. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. So, I am thinking that because this letter is massive, we're going to need a whole sheet of paper for the back. Yes, we are. And is that even going to fit? Just about. Okay. So, I haven't figured out if I'm going to have this standing or sat flat yet. So, I think what I'll do is I will paper the back, but whether or not I decorate it, I'm not sure. Now, what I think I need is this sort of tealy, bluey type colour. And there's a lot of black in this as well. So, I think what I might do is actually start by painting this black. So, bear with me two seconds. I am going to go and get some paint and a paintbrush and be right back. Okay, I'm back, and sensible as ever, of course, I am wearing a white jumper, and I'm about to start painting with black paint. Yeah, nobody um, gave me the intelligence tools. Um, I'm using Studio Acrylics, uh, just black gesso. I would not be able to live without this stuff, seriously. I use so much of it. In fact, I've gone through nearly a whole massive tub. So I am going to... I always take it out of the lid, don't know why, and I always use a small paintbrush, no matter how big an area I'm painting. Don't know why I do that either. I guess that's just habit, but... What I'm going to do is just paint around all the edges. I haven't quite decided what exactly I'm doing with the paper yet, so if I have all the edges covered, you know, if I end up covering them up with paper, then so be it, and if I don't, then I don't. And the reason I am doing this before I put the shelves in, like the inside bits to make it into sort of a printer's tray stroke configuration box, is that if I do this now, I've not got to sort of fuss around the little bits too much, and I can then just paint the little bits that I put in separately. Now the good thing of course about making your own printer's tray stroke configuration box is that you can have them, um, each compartment as big or as small as you want it. So if you want a little tiny one you can have a little tiny one, if you want a big huge one you can have a big huge one. So that's really helpful. actually is really soaking in a lot more than I had expected it to. Okay. So the last one that I did, which was an altered J configuration stroke printed tray letter, um, was a lot smaller and that was more of a white background. So this I'm going for the darker, which tends to be more my thing. I prefer the darker colours, I think, to sort of the white. I love shabby chic, but I'm not very good at working with sort of materials and laces and trims and stuff. I'm still probably a bit scared of them. <laughs> not sure exactly what to do with them. So, right. I'm going to put this right the way around. The edges on the inside. Turn that up the other way. And then we'll go up the in 
so I was speaking to my husband earlier about the fact that I was going to do this process stroke tutorial video and I was saying I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to ramble on about why I make stuff because rambling rambling to myself is fine but rambling if I know other people are listening is probably not my thing also you know I don't have a huge amount of time to do tutorials stroke process videos I do have two children as it happens my husband's taken them out this morning and they've gone off swimming so I have a little bit of time to myself but usually as you'll probably find out with the rest of the process of this video it will be lots of little bits probably cut together because my crafting time is limited to either when the kids are in bed or when the little ones are asleep and the bigger ones entertained or you know I don't have generally like an hour or two hours to just sit and do nothing but craft because that's just not how my life works not that I would change that I love my kids to pieces I'm more than happy to spend a lot of time with and entertaining them of course I love my children but it means that um, crafting wise I don't necessarily have as much time as I would like but you know they're my children I chose to have them love them to pieces wouldn't change it so I'm just painting now <coughs> excuse me around the edges what I could have done actually which I didn't even think of until I started painting because that sounds very much like me to have an idea after I've already started another idea is actually ink the edges because I've got a really nice green so what I might actually do is just paint the top this top bit and then maybe ink the bottom half obviously I have no idea if that will work or not or if that will look good or not but you know we make it up as we go along and if we don't like it we paint back over it again so I've started this one so I've kind of got to do this one now but we go up to there and painting these little tiny edges isn't very easy so I'm not a huge fan of um, heat drying things um, I tend to find that I get bubbles and stuff. I don't have a proper um, embossing dryer thing that most people use. I have like a standard old, where is it, hold on. And it's not even mine, I borrowed it from someone and I haven't given it back yet. I have a Bosch big power tool proper heat gun, so that might just be because it's too hot, but um, I tend to find that everything I try to buy, uh, buy dry bubbles. I'm a, you know, I'm really good at bubbling things. So I'm not a huge fan of heat gunning to dry. So I think because this is just so it doesn't take too long, once I have painted this as much as I want it, I'm going to switch the camera off and leave it to to dry a bit more naturally. Right, how far round do we want to go with the black? I think we want to go right the way down this side as well. And right the way down here. And then obviously we did sand it but it's not necessarily perfect and if once the paint dry it looks a bit of a mess then we can go back and sand that again afterwards. So the next thing that we are going to do after this is make the little shelves for the insides. Now I have no idea what I'm going to put in this box. I wish um, the part of the reason I suppose that I've always struggled with the idea of making a printer's tray or configuration box is that it uses so much, you know, if you're stashed you have to put so much in it. But I have one thing that I know I want to use, which means I am going to need one very big um, compartment. But then I suppose that's good, because I suppose if I use one very big compartment, then that leaves me less space to fill up with other stuff. Okay. Into this side. Yeah, I'll paint up my arm. Paint up my arm. I'm not by any means a very neat and tidy crafter at all, in any way, shape or form, as my husband would gladly tell you from the mess that's constantly around my house, but you know. Right, okay, so we have gone from here, right the way around here, across and down. So I think that I might, do I leave it there or do I do this one? No, I think for now I'm going to leave it there, I mean like I said I can always come back and paint a little bit more later if I feel that I need to. So I'm going to leave it there for now. 
Um, I'm going to leave that to dry and I am going to wash this paintbrush out and come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back and I have brought my tray of inks with me. I'm not entirely sure that the black's completely dry yet, but you know, it'll be fine. Um, so what I need to do now is find an appropriate distress ink that will work for the paper. And I have a few greeny, bluey colours. So I am thinking that is ice spruce, which is that one. That might work. That's where the wood which I think might actually work better. So let's give that a go. It doesn't work. We'll go over it with something else. Right. So, Heathered Wood, Old Makeup Sponge. I don't know if that's going to be a bit too dark. Oh, it's not showing too well, actually. Okay trying to match that to the paper. Do you know what? We're going to scrap that and we are going to go back to the black paint. Bear with me. Paintbrush. Ah, sorry. Okay, back to the paintbrush that was soaking. So I need to just tissue paper that a bit to get the, the wet off. Right, okay. So back to the black paint from around the edges and we can always use the distress ink either on the paper or wherever later but I don't like that because it's not showing up enough so back to the painted ears and again white jumper to roll my sleeves up rather than cover myself in paint And I have, and you're really lucky that I'm not wearing it, but I have this old, really manky dressing gown. I have no idea if you call them dressing gowns in the States, but that's what we call them here, that I usually wear when I am crafting in my house, because my house generally, because it's such an old house, is absolutely freezing cold, and it's this really disgusting pink fluffy dressing gown, and it is covered in, like, glue and paint, and it's been washed, obviously, but... These things tend not to come out, especially the glue that I use. It doesn't tend to sort of come out of anything. I'm not a massive fan, actually, of um, glue gun glue, and my husband tells me that I should use it more because it's more effective and it's quicker, but it's not something I use that much. My, I currently am using uh, the Aileen's Tacky Glue generally for paper and Fabri-Tac for everything and anything else. Um, the only problem with the Fabri-Tac is that it's very stringy, very, very stringy. And um, it kind of goes tacky very quickly as well. So if you don't get whatever you want stuck, like straight away, then you get this horrible kind of stringy mess, which I don't much like. But I use that um, for my lamp to stick all the pieces of paper in place in my lamp to the metal. And it is really good because it does kind of stick anything to anything, but... Like I said, it can get very tacky very quickly. It dries clear, which obviously is is a very good thing because you don't want <coughs> excuse me again you don't want glue showing everywhere. So the fact that it dries clear is brilliant, but the tackiness is not so great. But I'm sure that as I carry on, as I go along, I'll find and try more and different glues. I tend not to stick to the same thing for too long. Also, I ran out of Mod Podge, and it's not all that easy to buy here in the UK, as it is, as I've seen in other places. Um, and it's also really quite expensive here, so I've run out of that. I went to the store to try and get some, and they didn't have any, so I've either got to order, order it online now, or wait until the store restocks it and go and grab some more. So... We're nearly all the way around, and then I'm thinking we might have to do the back corners. I haven't yet decided if I'm going to paper right the way to the edges or leave a little gap around. As I said, make it up as I go along. Totally winging it. I think that bit might need sanding again, actually, once that's, once that's done. But I think the most important thing about these process videos was to show you how I took the paper mache or papier mache letter and turned it from 
the standard papier mache letter that we all know into the printer's tray stroke configuration box. It's not something that's difficult, you know, as you've seen, it's really easy, really simple. But um, a lot of people have commented on my video saying that they'd not seen it done before, and as I said, I'd not seen it done before. It's not to say it hasn't been, of course, it may well have been, but something that I hadn't seen done before. Um, a lot of people said they hadn't seen it done before, so I thought it was quite a neat idea. So, there we go. So there are a few bits now I've painted it that look like they're going to need sanding again, which is fine, which obviously I'm going to need to wait until the paint's dry to do that. I'm going to just turn it over and do some of the edges around the back. The only thing I don't know with this is once I've filled it full of lovely, lovely things, whether or not it will still stand up. So, I'm not sure if this will end up being a wall hanging rather than a freestanding letter. I'm going to try and get done in this video is the inside shelves as well, so that you've got the the base of it down, because embellishing is the fun and um, part that you know most people will already kind of know how to do without me having to show them. And I've actually put my um, cutting mat on the table underneath this so that you can see what I'm doing because I actually have a glass table which works really well for me usually because uh, if I get anything on it, paint, ink, or anything else it just rubs straight off so I put, but obviously that wouldn't work very well for the camera so I couldn't just leave it like that whilst filming what I'm doing but usually that works really well for me so I don't need sort of a craft mat or whatever but this underneath now is my cutting mat which we are going to need anyway question is if I put it upside down am I going to get paint everywhere probably yes but you know we will do it anyway Part of the reason I think that I use such a small paintbrush other than um, habit is that um, you don't tend to get so much of a bulk of paint and sort of drips and stuff. And I'm not a massive fan of drips unless I'm creating them specifically, unless I specifically want drips. Which sometimes you do, because sometimes it looks good. So we are going to paper this whole thing, like I think I said. trying to get some of the lines out a little bit as well. Some of the uh by lines, sorry, I mean brush stroke lines. And I'm hoping you can all see this okay. Not much I can do if you can't. I can't see what you can see until I watch it back and then laugh at myself for rambling like a wally. <laughs> So, I don't know if um, how many of you keep track of your subscribers, it's not something that I generally do, but I got an email a couple of days ago saying that I'd got a new subscriber, so the next time I logged in and had a look, I thought I'd um, have a look where I was at, and I posted my first YouTube video January this year, and I am at nearly 500 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing, so thank you all so much for that. And because of that, I have decided when I get to 500, and I think I'm about 15 away from that, I am going to do a giveaway challenge. And I thought about the prize for it, and I thought that something that would be really cool to do, I'm not going to tell you about the challenge just yet, but something that I thought for the prize would be really cool would be to offer the winner the chance of a gift card at one of four UK stores. Um, and the reason for that is I tend to find some kind of quite funky out there different stores that sell different types of things or different things that I've not seen before which are, you know, I think are really cool. 
and also a lot of my subscribers are in the US so giving them the chance to go shopping at UK stores I thought would be really cool um, so the idea is that I will give them the choice of the four stores and they can spend this certain amount of money wherever I set at one of those four stores I will then place the order on that person's behalf have it delivered to me and then forward it straight over to them um, which I thought would be a really cool idea so if you are interested in that do stay tuned because that will be coming up when I get 15 more subscribers whenever that may be so right now oh, oh, oh. Just this last inside bit here to do. So that is pretty much the whole of the inside edges painted. A little bit more. Excuse me again. Okay, we're good. That's um, they're quite dry underneath. Stand that up there. I am just going to go and put this paintbrush into some water. And what I actually did with the last one, which I think I'm also going to do with this one, is I papered each section individually. So each section actually had a different um, piece of paper behind it, which I think I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm just going to put this in some water, let it soak, <coughs> and then I'll come back to it and clean it out later. So now I'm going to get some chipboard. I think I'm going to use this that I showed you earlier. This is the, um, I've just got some 6x6 six six sheets of this and it's really thick. So I think that my first shelf is going to be across here because I think I would like quite a big compartment in there now I mean obviously if you decide you don't like them you can always rip them out and start again or you can add more so I think for now I'm going to go to there and that's left me a nice little flat paint mark so I know where I'm going so so I've sort of measured it and I say measured obviously I've not measured I've just held it in there and as it happens there's a black mark there now where I wanted it to so we're going to put that down over there and then we are going to line these lines up here because that's still a straight edge and we are going to do a line through and I'm just going to score my chipboard I'm just going to keep doing this. I've got loads of blades for this thing, so there we go. I think that's pretty much cut through. Fabulous. Doesn't matter if it rips like that. Again, we'll sandpaper that off in afterwards. So let's hold that back up. We wanted the bit we cut off. Yep. <laughs> right. Okay. Is that the bit we wanted? No. That way. <laughs> okay. So now we need the depth. So I'm going with approximately there. I'll put a little groove in. This is where we're going. And we'll line those up again to try and get a straight line. And there's my little groove mark there. Line that back up. Looks about right. This is really thick, this chipboard. I don't know um, what the weight is, but this stuff doesn't bend or give. Or I just bought a load of this because it was cheap, a load of 6x6 um, six six boards, and I've used quite a lot of it, and it's worked quite well for me. So that's cool. It's um, a little bit thicker than the letter itself, so okay, we're nearly through. Nearly through. A bit more. 
Yeah. <coughs> and how does that look? That is not bad at all. Arguably ever so slightly too long. But not much. A little bit off the end. Little, little, little bit. I don't actually tend to measure anything at all, guys, to be honest. Um, my measurement skills leave quite a lot to be desired. And I can hear my postman. I wonder what lovely goodies he's bought for me today. Okay. Let's check that. And that, I think, is more or less perfect. Fabulous. So what I'm going to do now is take my Fabri-Tac, which usually I leave upside down. And look at that. Um, my daughter was using this yesterday. Um, she was making um, glitter fairies, as you can probably see from the glitter all around the edges. And um, it ended up in quite a mess. I usually leave this upside down so that it um, kind of drains upside down a bit. This is an old bottle. I've got a... Um, really big bottle of it but I sort of decant it into this one because this is a more workable bottle. There we go. Right. So which way round do I want it? Which is the edge that I didn't cut because that would be the flatter. The two edges. Go that way. And then I'm literally just going to run the glue along the bottom. I don't know if you saw any of that, sorry. So I've literally just run a line of glue along the bottom there. And then I am just going to put it where I want it. And hold it in place. Aha! Now, I'm a wally. What I haven't done is also glued down the side where it's going to stick to the other side. So we'll just pull that off, not a problem. I'm going to cover it in paper anyway. You can see the glue line in there. Right, there we go. Back in. Second time lucky. And so I'm pushing down on it, but I'm also pushing from the side of the K into the into the side. K is actually quite a um, difficult letter, I think, to make into a configuration box throat printer tray. It's not a very standard box shape letter. Um, and then I've just sort of put my finger in and wiped away some of the glue from the edges. Let me do that in there as well. I'm going to sand it afterwards, so. Let me just push it this way. And then I can push it down. So you can't see that, can you? Push it down like that. <coughs> don't need to hold it for a huge amount of time but just long enough for it to kind of stay in place. Right, so there is my first compartment. I kind of want for now for this to be a really big compartment, this bottom one. I don't know if it will stay like that. Uh, it depends whether or not the thing that I want to put in there fits in there, which I won't know till it arrives. So, but for now we're going to leave it like that. Um, I think I want quite a square box at the top here and unfortunately it's just a little bit too short. Upsetting. Right. So I'll put the lid back on the glue. Nice. Um, right. Should we do a box here? Maybe that big. I like that. Go to there. Just mark that. Like so. We've got a straight edge there. Yes, we have. Right, fabulous. And then I'm going to pick this line here. And I am going to score again down this line. I would say that because you're making a um, printer's tray configuration box type thing and you're going to stand things on these shelves that you would want to use a thick chipboard. Um, like I said earlier, you could use um, corrugated card or something else, but my opinion would be that you'd want quite a thick chipboard because of the because of what you're making. 
So that's quite a tight fit in there, but that's probably quite a good thing. And yeah, I quite like that. I'm just going to add 